related to the African American Museum. Calling the meeting to order at 6.07. Mr. Sullivan is not present. Ms. Hupp is not present. I am here. Dr. Camby. Present. Mrs. Dryden. Present. Dr. Ramirez. Present. Mrs. Peterson. Present. And Mrs. Torres. Is there a motion for the adoption of the agenda? I so move to adopt the agenda as presented. Is there a second? No, second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. The motion carries. Uh, three in favor, two absent, no opposition. Moving on, do we have any public comment? None. And at this time, we will move on to closed session at about seven, I'm sorry, 6.08 and return at approximately 6.40. Do you think about 30 minutes? Okay, 6.30. All right. Actually, do we have a student here that would like to lead us in the flag school? Christian, I hear Christian's name. <laughs> Christian, front ten, come on up. Can you come lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Come on, Christian. <laughs> you know how it's done. You do it every morning, right? You said my boy. Oh, wait. Please stand. I <laughs> can't over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and of its people, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Christian, for uh, sharing your talents with us. And that, um, That's something that I, I want to highlight that I, I'm very pleased with the students here at Mesa Union is that at the drop of a hat, like just now, we can call upon basically anyone to do any of these tasks. And um, I'm very, very pleased at, at the caliber of the students that we have here at Mesa Union. And, and for those people that are involved with teaching and coaching and, and all of that, it brings up uh, their wherewithal, which brings us to where we're at. But anyway, with that having been said, let's go to the, we need to take care of some matters here real quickly. Um, <clears throat> can I get a motion to adopt the minutes from our previous session? I still move to adopt the minutes from February 20th, 2024 meeting. I'll second the motion. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of adopting the minutes, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries, 4 0 in favor. Um, any audience members to address the board? No speaker cards. With that, I'll turn the time over to uh, our superintendent, Dr. Ramirez. Well, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, Board of Trustees, pleasure to be here with you and audience, thank you for being here. Uh, it as really a big part of my superintendent's report this evening. It's really going to be a matter of celebrating, celebrating the individuals that are here with us and trying to 
uh, highlight their accomplishments uh, because there are quite a few. So um, on my superintendent's report, we're going to start. We're going to start with Mesa moments. There are three of our employees that I want to highlight, um, and hopefully we can we can begin there. So let me start with uh, our library resource tech substitute teacher parent cheerleader, general all around enthusiasm queen around here, uh, Mrs. Casey Lutz. Um, Mrs. Lutz has, has uh, taken over in, in the library and she has been fantastic. Uh, she has just been uh, a joy. She comes with energy, enthusiasm, a real professionalism, um, has learned extremely well, um, you know, the ins and outs of that space and uh, has always really committed herself to, to the kids being a parent of two herself. Uh, I consistently have uh, just seen her grow and seen her contributions to us uh, do as well. Uh, she helps out, more than helps out, she leads during our release time for teachers, time that has really become invaluable to their week-to-week -week communication, about learning, and she has uh, held that down tremendously well. Uh, not an easy task at all, but every single week uh, she does that for us, and uh, she's just been an amazing contributor. And of course, this this entire year, but but you know, just over the years now. Um, so I really want to recognize her uh, for and and just offer her this this little this little uh, token of our appreciation. And it just reads, uh, thank you for your service and dedication to Mesa Union School District, March of 2024. So if you could come up. I think everybody wants to share. <laughs> So. Thank you. Next, I'd like to highlight um, Mrs. Michelle Wagner, and Mrs. Wagner is here. Uh, Mrs. Wagner happens to be a longstanding uh, teacher here at Mesa. Uh, uh, she is a, a ter uh, currently a teacher on special assignment, but has also this year uh, jumped right into uh, being a CJSF club sponsor. Uh, she has taken on as part of her uh, elective class uh, or her her um, MTSS class service learning projects and and a number of 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 ways that have reached out into the community where our kids now are are, are out there representing us and representing causes that are important to them. And then, of course, most recently, she was our super quiz uh, coach. Uh, that's not a new role for her. That's a role that she's taken on numerous years and uh, has has held down those responsibilities with incredible enthusiasm, always thinking about kids, always trying to see their development and their growth, and just a, an incredible demeanor. And I always, whenever she comes to me with ideas, I'm always trying to get to yes, uh, because they are ways of pushing our kids beyond the boundaries of school and really teaching them a little bit about what they uh, not only don't know enough about, but what could be really intriguing for them. So I, I just uh, appreciate her tremendously. I know we all do. So with that, I'd like to have Mrs. Wagner come up. And next we have Miss Miss McKenna, Miss Trees McKenna. There's Miss McKenna. So Miss McKenna, also a longstanding teacher here at Mesa Union, uh, eighth grade teacher, ELA and social studies. Uh, but this year, and actually dating back to last year, uh, she took on, you know, I approached her about the possibility of supporting with mock trial. 
and she very gladly uh, decided to do so. And so I know what uh, commitment and effort uh, it took on her behalf to be able to uh, do that on the staff end of things. We know that we have some wonderful coaches that have that have held down that uh, responsibility for for several years. But uh, for us to have uh, somebody who liaises, who supports, who works with the kids in 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 and out of the school uh, has been really amazing. Uh, her dedication and her commitment to this program, but not just to this program, to so many other pieces of of the school. Uh, and then most recently, just the science fair as well. So there's many, many things that Mrs. Ms. McKenna brings uh, to us that are of great value and great benefit to kids. And we we thank her for that this evening. Ms. McKenna, if you could come, come forward. Thank you. All right, and of course we have a packed house and uh, that's because we have a, a few other uh, important individuals and teams to celebrate. So I'll move on to um, our girls basketball team, our sixth grade girls basketball team. If you could just please stand coaches, if you could stand. So our kiddos did phenomenally well. Uh, they they won their league and then most recently won the the rotary tournament and, and in many instances it wasn't even close and a lot of that is just due to their hard work their commitment uh thank you to our coaches mr palomares and mr bean if you could take a take a stand as well and and be celebrated You know, it's it's great to see that uh, that commitment to athletics it comes with a commitment to being a student, and I can see uh, as I look at at our at our kiddos here that that they are that well-rounded uh, student that we want to continue to develop, and uh, we couldn't be more proud of you. Uh, thank you for 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 showing out the way that you did, and for making that uh, and for making us proud uh, as a as a school and as a community. Thank you. If we if we could have you up and coaches included as well, and maybe with the picture. All right, and and uh, and just to conclude our 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 time, want to celebrate our Mesa Union mock trial team at uh, the mock trial team grew uh, this year, uh, grew across the county, and I would like to say that it has everything to do with our coaches who helped grow that program, from Mrs. Romero in particular, who pushed for that growth to happen. Uh, but uh, we, we, we wound up in, in third place. Our kiddos wound up in third place, hard fought third place, uh, but many, many individual accolades, many, many individual recognitions across the board, uh, just signaling all of the great, great, uh, not just performance, but to put aside the winning and all of that, it was really about the demonstration of talent the commitment on your behalf and on your parents' and family's behalf
to be able to stay the course uh, through many, many, many uh, coaching sessions and uh, just just time, time that it took to to be better and to commit yourself to doing the best possible. I believe, and I've said this privately to Mrs. Romero on, on a number of occasions, I believe that this will be, as the years go on, one of the most uh, impressive uh, pieces of, 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 or memories that you have from Mesa, but not just the Mesa, but just in general, because of the preparation and the development of who you are as a person. And that, that part is the part that I'm the most proud of uh, in, in my role, is to see your growth, see your confidence, and see you just uh, show show out and represent us as well as you did and will continue to. So uh, thank you, congratulations. Thank you to our coaches, Ms. Vanarelli, Ms. Vanarelli, and And, and, and Judge Judge Romero, Judge Romero, if you come up, and, and of course, of course, Mrs. Romero, and if we can have maybe all of the kids come up and and uh, join us. And and thank you, thank you so much, parents, family members who uh, take your kids back and forth, who stay with them late at night, uh, who just continue to encourage them when they maybe don't want to follow through on things. Uh, we know that that's just part of growth, and and uh, really want to thank all of you for making that commitment with us. Uh, many times over, um, I've presented to the board um, and to the public on our learner profile, on our framework for the future. And, um, you know, we're very proud of that. We're making goals and gains toward making sure that every one of our kids represents those those um, those competencies. But I think uh, just in in the group that I see here this evening, we see what that can look like. And I'm really glad. And more than anything else, I'm very encouraged by your continued growth and what that will mean for us and for you and for your families, not just this year or next, but well into the future. So thank you all for your commitment. Thank you for being here. And thank you for uh, continuing to support one another more than anything else. And, and of course, you're more, than, I always say this, you're more than glad to stay here for the remaining part of the meeting. Um, but if you can't, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just like that, they're gone again, Paul. Yeah. So much. And then I'm like. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, to moving moving on, uh, and thank you, board, for continuing to allow me to bring a little bit of, of what we do and who we are here to celebrate with all of you. I know that sometimes it's not possible or easy to see these things, and if you're not personally involved in it, um, I know that that sometimes you hear about it. But there's nothing like seeing the people involved and, and, and what it means just to to celebrate uh, their accomplishments together. So thank you for allowing me that time. Um, I wanted to just pivot here to the learning and engagement piece. Um, just wanted to remind the board that we are in a uh, LCAP review and renewal process. Uh, next year will be year one of a new plan. Uh, one thing that I wanted to just put out is that 
even though it will be year one, it's not necessarily going to be a new plan entirely. There are many, many things that uh, we naturally will want to carry over and continue. Uh, if for no other reason other than the fact that it's been uh, either too short a spell to be able to pivot entirely, or these are oftentimes things that have worked that we want to continue to see uh, work for more students. So this is just a rundown of the processes that we followed, very similar to ones that we have followed in prior years. Um, we have our parent advisory committee that's forming. Uh, those dates will be uh, Thursday, April 25th, Wednesday, May 8th, and Thursday, May 23rd. We have our Youth Truth Survey, which is out now, uh, and will run through the 22nd of March. Uh, that's for students in grades three through five and, and five through eight. Uh, the, the elementary band is somewhat new. It's only been around for a year. So we're hoping to see uh, where we are from last year. And then uh, our middle school student focus group continues to be uh, part of what, uh, what we do. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, a smaller subset of that group came out and actually presented to staff. They actually talked directly to staff and that was really impressive. I can't represent to you how impressed I was with their honesty, with their candor, with the way in which they um, engaged with our staff and gave them information um, in a way that young people tend to do in a very honest and, and forthright manner. So uh, I just wanted to review some of the steps that we'll be undertaking in the coming weeks and months uh, in order to launch a, a renewal of the LCAP. Uh, moving into facilities, I wanted to just make mention, uh, give an update. You'll see a uh, board resolution continue in this month. I'm sorry, in this agenda for this month. Um, we are waiting to have, uh, we should be uh, receiving any day now, the driller, the driller specifications for the well. Um, preemptively, we've received a list of nine drilling contractors uh, from our, uh, geolog from our, ge our geologists. And that preliminary list was compiled <clears throat> by um, their understanding of the local geography and local uh, drillers um, that have that level of expertise and familiarity with this basin. The other thing that I wanted to mention is it was in many ways cross-referenced from a list that I received back in the fall, uh, right around July of 2020, June, July of 2023, uh, in my conversations with um, with um, um, with not with Del Norte, but with uh, our water master. Um, anyway, it'll come to me. Uh, but anyhow, the 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 idea is that we already uh, have reached out to uh, these drillers. And they are just awaiting the specifications. We wanted to jump ahead and inform them uh, preemptively that we are looking to, to uh, undertake this project. And they are just waiting for the final details. We got back responses from at least three of them indicated that they had a great level of interest in, in pursuing our project. So we're hoping to generate uh, perhaps some additional bids that will allow us then to, to just find the best partner and the best uh package of uh, service and cost uh, to the district. So uh, next, I just wanted to review attendance. Uh, we continue to stay somewhat steady. Uh, our goal continues to be 95. This month of February, we're just under that. Uh, you'll see there that uh, we've uh, certainly bounced back uh, better January and February, certainly in, in relation to December. But this continues to be a focal point for us, um, and we you know, continue to make that a priority. And just to conclude, uh, here's a list of a few of our upcoming events. Uh, we have our science fair tomorrow. Uh, that'll be a full day affair. Uh, our PFO Jogathon will be on Friday. Uh, the VCO, a VCOE science fair uh, is going to be on the 22nd. Uh, last count, we had 42 uh, students in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, customarily a seventh and eighth, but this year we have the inclusion of a couple of uh, sixth graders. Uh, and then we have our spring break uh, coming up and open house on Wednesday, April 24th. And with that, I conclude my superintendent's report.
Thank you very much, Dr. Ramirez. Um, thank you for the Mace moments, especially. Um, it's good to have our students uh, come in. I always enjoy having them. Um, any comments or reports, questions for Dr. Ramirez? I guess I'm curious with the, the student focus group, if there were things that maybe came up in more of a live session that we hadn't seen yet, like in a youth truth survey, or if it was really just the students verbally recapping what was already, you know, reported in versus if it was more of a conversation. So it was more of a conversation. And interestingly enough, there was a lot of clarification. So we they drilled down into some some specific uh, not aggregate scores, but some some high points and low points from our survey. And in certain instances, what they found was that it depends on what student the, the student's experience might be. And for example, there were some we we battled this idea of bringing into the classroom relationships uh, from the outside. And, and what those real world experiences look like. So, so they, they were able to cite a few of the examples that they felt were really important, or that some of either they or some of their colleagues, some, as far as um, um, far as what they felt learning was most, or how it would be relevant. In addition to that, they also talked about uh, on the behavioral side. Things like notions of respect. What does respect look like? What does respect given look like? And what does respect received look like from their vantage point? And so it made for a very fruitful conversation. So it wasn't just necessarily reading from a PowerPoint. It was really more than that. And of course, the teachers were asking their own set of questions. In some instances, it was good because, you know, we have teachers across the grade spectrum. And it was good for the lower grade to hear from kids that they themselves had taught. Uh, over the years, and now they're seventh and eighth graders, ready to move on. And they came with a lot of just presence and uh, very, very mature for 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 especially for the audience. And so um, there were some very specific points that teachers needed further clarification or for or further information. And I think they did a really nice job of doing that. Anything else? Hearing none, um, we'll move on to uh, board members' reports and communications. Is there any correspondence? No correspondence, but I meant to have a couple lapel things that I want to give to the board members. And Dr. Ramirez, Ms. Pearson, and Ms. Torres. These are not correspondence, but this one's before. Yeah. Okay. And do all the students that participate get one? They do. They do. So that one is, I'll tell you a little bit about this one. Uh, last year, her name is Ella Oshoa. She drew the sketch. She's somewhere from the county. She won at the county level. She moved on to the state. She won this drawing at the state level. She moved on to the nat um, the uh, national competition mock trial, and she won at the national mock trial competition. So because of that, the COE decided to incorporate that sketch into this lapel pen. And so she's a local county student. They also have another lapel pen. This is for Battle of the Books. I this is a logo that um, the Ventura County Office of Education opened up for Battle of the Books. And my daughter, Olivia Romero, she entered it and she got chosen. So her logo will appear in all the lapel pens, including all the material for Battle of the Books for the middle school and the elementary school division. So she's very proud. And I don't have that many. I know Dr. Ramirez already received one, but I do have some. And if I get some when the competition takes place, if I get some more, I will bring some more and distribute some more. But I wanted to pass these out to you all. Um, we did that. It is yeah. the end. You have a letter, okay? I'll just it. It is the end of my. And 
her name is on it. It's on the stand, so it's really cool. Uh, it, I, actually, I, don't, I was wearing it earlier. But um, that of the books is the end of April. So we here at Mesa Union have two, two teams. We have one for the elementary and one for the middle school. For the first time, the East BCOE is going to open it up to middle school students. So our team for both have already finished all the books. They are rereading the books. And we started meeting. And they are doing great. And so we hope to have another very good year. Thank you very much for that, uh, Trustee Romero, and for all your involvement that you brought in these great programs that you're supporting. And I appreciate that very, very much. Are there any other uh, reports, communications, interests, or concerns from the board? Hearing none, then we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda? I have a second. Uh, any comments, questions, or items to be discussed? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of adopting a consent agenda as it's been presented, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. That motion carries 4 0 in favor. Um, we're now on to item 11, public hearing. Um, I'd like to open up the public hearing for AB 1200, disclosure of the collective bargaining agreement uh, with the Mesa Union Teachers Association uh, for public comment and so forth. Um, that is now open. At, what is this? Seven eighteen. Any comments from the board or any other public member? Public has left us. Hearing none, we'll close that hearing at uh, seven nineteen, and we have a public hearing for the tentative collect collective bargaining agreement with the Macy Union Teachers Association. Um, and we'll open that public hearing at uh, 719. Now, uh, everybody don't jump at once to come up and comment. And with no comment, we'll close this public hearing at uh, 720. Um, okay, item number 12A, consideration of approval of the disclosure of the collective bargaining agreement with the Macy Union Teachers Association in accordance with AB 1200 for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2024, do I have a motion? Do you agree? Okay. That's where it ends. So it says for the period up through 2024. Should that be extended out to 2026? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think we just so you want to take care of that, Jamie? So I move to consider the approval disclosure of collecting bargaining agreement with Macy Union Teachers Association in accordance with AB 1200, AB 27546 for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2026. Is there a second? Any motion? Any discussion? Other than the correction of the date? All those in favor of approving this disclosure say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed say nay. Motion carries 4-0 in favor. 
consideration and approval of the tentative, mark, tentative bargaining agreement with Mason Union District um, Teachers Association um, for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30th. Is that also 2026? No? That's, pardon me, 2025? Uh, do I have a motion for that? Move to consider the approval of the tentative bargaining agreement with Mesa Union School District and, and Mesa Union Teachers Association for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2025. Is there a second? Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving this uh, tentative bargaining agreement between uh, Mason School District and MUTA for the periods of July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2025, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 4-0 in favor. Item C, consideration of the adoption of the second interim report ending July 31st, 2024. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, Tammy, would you like to talk about this? I have this feeling. As we uh, look at enrollment numbers, um, you'll notice that there's a slight difference um, from first interim to second interim. These are certified CalPADS numbers. So we have 567 students enrolled as of fall census in 23-24. And we have revised our enrollment projections upwards based upon some inter-district transfers that the district has received. So those have been reflected within this interim. So we're anticipating 585 students in 24-25, and then in 25-26, as some cohorts age out, we're anticipating those numbers to, to drop to 569. And those will be continually resolved, uh, re, uh, reviewed, and uh, as we move towards adopted budget uh, in June. When we look at our projected ADA, you'll notice that even though our, the number of students haven't changed significantly, the enrollment percentages have. Uh, we were very conservative as we approached adopted budget based upon historic, the last two years uh, attendance rates. And so we had revised those downwards for the adopted budget. At first interim, based upon the current information that we had, we did revise those upwards to about 94%. And I'm pleased to present that as of P1, we're more towards a 25% or a 95% percentage rate. And so that's why you're seeing those increase, increases year over year. And then in again in 24, 25 and 25, 26, those have been revised to reflect our current enrollment projections. When we look at our unduplicated pupil count, it's gone up slightly uh, just because of fall census, as well as um, having additional data about some of the students that are or the students that are enrolled in the county programs. So that number is now projected to be 39.63%. And that is certified as of fall one. So we anticipate that that will carry that through the end of the year. In 24-25, based upon current numbers, that will drop uh, go up to 40.96% because it is a three-year rolling average, and then up to 41.22%. That's really good news for the district because as we see declining COLAs uh, in our future, having a, an increase in unduplicated pupil count really helps drive those funds. That supplemental piece uh, is very, very help, helpful uh, in calculating LCSS. 
when we looked at, at our cost of living uh, adjustments, this year we're funded with an 8.22% COLA. Uh, January budget uh, proposal did not bring new, good news as it relates to COLA. Uh, it's dropped to 0.76%. Towards the end of April, we'll have an official COLA, but it will be dependent on how the governor chooses to approach that COLA in his May revise as to whether or not um, that will be go upwards or remain static, or if as a legislature and as a governor, they decide to deficit that COLA. We are seeing some large projections of deficit spending across the state, and so we're just uncertain as to how that will impact the budget. The uh, We're currently in test one of Prop 98. Um, the governor's working um, diligently to keep us in test one because it's a much more defined percentage across the board and he wants to protect other parts of the budget. But if we do move to a test two or a test three, then uh, education does get a larger portion. But as we know, as history sometimes repeats itself in 07, 08, that didn't really matter. And uh, we saw a huge impact to the schools when we saw a decline in revenues across the state. Uh, it's just, those are things that we're considering, we're watching very, very carefully. Um, and one of the things to note is that when we had revenue limits, the we had a certain amount of protection because if the legislature took action to deficit revenue limits, there were makeup clauses and we received those monies in future years. LCFF does not have that makeup clause. So um, myself, fellow CBOs, CSBA, HASBO, uh, a groups, advocacy groups up and down the state are really advocating that we receive that, that full, whatever COLA is, that we receive that COLA rather than seeing it be deficited. Because we do know that those build year over year, so it's to our benefit to, to see those COLA fully funded. When we look at our LCFF revenue, it's up slightly to 6,405,000. And again, Part of that is the supplemental concentration piece. And then we did recognize a student that is, is enrolled in the county program. And so we have more definitive information as far as their ADA. When we look out to 24, 25, um, we are seeing that while the COLA is deficited or down significantly from first interim, we're still seeing projections of 6,512,000. And that's predominantly because of the uptick in ADA and then in 25-26, uh, projected revenues of 6693000 So uh, as a, a whole, we're seeing slightly more revenues this year for LCFF, slightly more in 24-25, and um, even more, or even a significant, or not a significant, but a slight increase in 25-26. Total revenue um, from adopted budget to current, we're seeing about $22,000 more in LCFF. Federal revenue, we're seeing about thirty-four thousand more dollars. Um, that relates to uh, some changes in Title One, mental health monies, uh, special ed monies. We saw uh, um, an increase. We have been notified of what our federal IDEA grant will be, and it is up slightly from where uh, we anticipated at adopted budget and first interim. Other state revenue is up by 108,000 from adopted budget. That's partly because we recognize that we're now recognizing that ongoing uh, transportation reimbursement, as well as some increases in ELOP funds, and then other ro local revenue is up as well. And that's predominantly because we're seeing some increases as it relates to AB 602 dollars, which are also special ed dollars, um, because we're at least holding our own as far as ADA concern is concerned and other districts are seeing greater declines. Um, we're seeing our portion of the pot is not decreasing at the same rate the other districts are. So that's also good news, as well as um, we do recognize that pass through for Golden Valley and their enrollment in ADA is also up. So that also provides some protections. We've also recognized some increases in interest revenue we're still seeing those um, remain to be strong, about 4%, um, which, as you recall, a few years ago, we were barely receiving 1%. So that really helps the district because we are a cash-rich district. So that's, that's very helpful, not only in um, Fund 1, 
but in our bond fund and some of the other funds that we have, we are seeing significant increases in interest revenue because of the amount of cash we do have on hand. And so that's also protection because if the legislature chose to fully fund COLA, but potentially move back to deferrals, um, as we've seen historically, uh, we would be in a, a good position to be able to, to weather that because we are able to uh, potentially move funds from other, uh, move funds, move cash from other funds temporarily and or um, just because of the amount of cash we have on hand in the district. So that's helpful. I just want to make a point of clarification. Um, cash on hand just re uh, refers to cash flow. It does not mean additional revenue. It's just how 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 those apportionments land in in our existing accounts. So for anybody that might be uh, listening to this, it, it it has to do with how cash comes in on hand to pay for our debts or our existing costs, whether it's staffing, service costs, whatever the case might be. So I just want to make that uh, clear because I don't want things to be misconstrued. And there are what some one-time funds that are restricted that we have planned to spend over the next two or three years as well. But the, the state did opt to distribute that cash up front. So that's also another benefit to the district because we um, were planning to spend those over the next three to four years. And so that also creates some cushion as well. When we look at our total expenditures, um, we have recognized the settlement in the second interim with certificated staff. And that's predominantly why you see a slight increase in um, certificated salaries or significant, I guess it's not slight, but it's a significant increase. Classified salaries, they're still remaining somewhat static. We will recognize their settlement uh, at when we do the May revise and as with estimated actuals, but we will be bringing those documents um, to the board in April. Our benefits are up in proportion, uh, recognizing the increase in costs in STRS. And then books and supplies are up slightly from adopted budget in the first interim. Uh, just those are just natural occurrences as we begin the year. Um, we have anticipated budgeted amounts. And then we also have some placeholders within the budget as we look to Title I and some of our other funds, um, we, we do just put them as a placeholder in books and supplies. And then as those are expended, we move those to the appropriate object code. Uh, capital expenditures are $56,000, uh, which is uh, up from adopted budget, but there's no change from first interim. And then other outgo, you can see has gone up by 61,000 and that's predominantly the pass through to Golden Valley. We do receive their federal uh, IDA funds, their 8602 funds, and then we distribute those as we receive them. So uh, that's why there's a, a slight increase of $61,000 on the other outflow. When we look to our multi-year projections, uh, we're, see, we're anticipating about 6.35 uh, million in the current year, 6.4 million in 24-25, and 6.56 million uh, in 25-26. When we look, we're looking at our multi-year projections, again, on the unrestricted side, we have shown, uh, demonstrated, we anticipate to have uh, about 1.25% or 1.25 positions decreased in the current budget. Um, and so we, even though there might be more layoffs than that, we've only recognized a smaller amount in 24-25. That's why there's a decrease from 23-24. Uh, we've also increased or included in the our projection steps and columns of about 2%. And then in 25-26, um, it goes up about and that for the 2% to 3 million 65,000. Classified salaries, uh, we've included steps and columns again of about 2%. Uh, as we see our classified staff move through the rain, the steps, um, just to include that. And then we employee benefits have included the increase in PERS costs. Um, SCRS costs are anticipated to be static over the next three, two to three years at 19.1%. So we're not seeing significant increases on the certificated side, but we are seeing PERS costs continuing, continuing to escalate. 
Books and supplies uh, are, have been increased by CPI uh, based upon current uh, second interim projections. Services and other operating costs have also been increased by CPI. And then capital outlay, um, we normally budget that as it occurs. So we have not included any anticipated expenditures for capital uh, expenditures in 24, 25 or 25, 26. And then other outgo, those are, it's a transfer of indirect costs uh, that remains somewhat static just because our categorical monies remain somewhat static and uh, our percentage remains somewhat static. So in the current year, we're projecting $6.6 .6 million in unrestricted expenditures that will drop in 24-25 to $6.45 million and then back up in 25-26 to $6,594,000. As we look to our reserves, um, we're anticipating our unrestricted ending fund balance to be about $1,253,000. Of that, $462,000 is uh, set aside for a reserve for un economic uncertainties, leaving us with, which equates to about a 13.55% reserve. In 24-25, um, it's at 13.47, and in 25-26, it's at 12.95%. But take remember, this does not include the settlement with MUDA or with MUFT. So those numbers will um, change as we move into estimated actuals and adopted budget for next year. As we look to our other funds, um, we have about, we're anticipating an Indian fund balance in fund 13 of about $417,000 in deferred maintenance, an Indian fund balance of about 728000 in our pupil transportation fund, uh, we have recognized um, our portion of the bus expenditure. So that's $72,000. And then special reserve to, uh, fund for technology, we have uh, $56,000 and for equipment, $12,000. And then in our bond and building fund, as I mentioned, um, we're seeing $98,000 in interest revenue. So we're anticipating an ending fund balance of three point, almost 3.5 million. And then uh, capital facilities, developer fees, $109,000. We still have those monies in fund 35 that we can move uh, most likely to like a deferred maintenance fund or even to our building fund, 59,000. And then in our bond interest funds, we have uh, a little over a million dollars, but those are restricted for debt service on the bonds. So that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? I have one. In your projections going forward, does that include uh, anything with that just current staffing that you're budgeting on, or does that involve ours in how would I have involved. not included um, the retirement incentive uh, in my considerations, just the uh, one retirement that we are aware of okay. that we're projecting. All right, thank you. Correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, um, all those in adopting the second interim report, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries four zero in favor. Uh, item D, consideration of acceptance of proposal Proposition 39 General Obligation Bonds Measurement Audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? I make the motion. Second. Any discussion about the Prop 39 uh, General Obligation Bonds? If uh, there were no findings, um, all monies had been expended as uh, approved by the vote. Okay, that's always a good thing. We're minding our, our business here. So, all those in favor of accepting the audit report for the Prop 39 general obligation bonds? 
for the year fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 4 0 in favor. Hmm. Item E consideration of approval of resolution 23 24 09, authorizing emergency contracting for the completion of the well improvements at the Mason School District pursuant to the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting. I'll second. Any discussion on this? It's the we're ongoing just, resolution. It's an ongoing resolution. It's we're going in thirty day increments, right, or monthly right. increments. That might be a better play. Um, all those in favor of approving this resolution twenty three dash twenty four dash zero nine, authorizing the emergency contracting for the completion of the well improvements at Mesa, say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Say nay. That motion carries four zero in favor. Uh, item F, consideration of approval of the proposal from the McClay Construction. I so move to consider the approval for the proposal from McClay Construction. Is there a second? Any discussion about the McClay Construction proposal? Uh, yes, so the, the proposal encompasses uh, installation of uh it would be either three or four rain diverters depending on the size uh over in the district office building and all of those um all of those doorways uh, have a flat roof where i'm sorry a flat facade where any kind of water uh at any angle tends to come in typically under or through the the doorway this would, we've done this small work uh, in the building immediately across in building A uh, with a similar setup. And it's been very successful in doing its purpose, which is pushing water away from the entry point. Um, the other one, the bigger expenditure is for a doorway that um, unfortunately has uh, now failed. Um, and uh, we've done also with McClay in the past, a very similar uh, kind of setup where it looks very, very, uh, it's fire fire retardant and it's intended to really fortify that, that doorway. It's uh, the one that is on the back side of the building um, where the sheds are next to the field area. And um, unfortunately that door is in, in, in pretty bad shape and in need of replacement. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns? I guess I just want to make sure you were addressing that. So it's not just the door, it's the whole thing. Yes, the, the entire door frame will be replaced and it will be replaced with a door and, um, and frame almost identical to the one that's two feet away. Is your question with regards to what if they open it up and find any surprises? Because this is the district office, right? Which it's on the back side of that building, correct? Yeah, which is a very old building. It is. It is. Uh, we. I don't suspect that he already came on site twice to take a look at it, measurements, take a look, and I don't predict that there's going to be any issue. Uh, the way he, the way that this particular contractor works, very, very professional, takes great care to not uh, go outside of the scope of what's been allowed. Uh, or what's been agreed upon. And um, he's done exceptional work for us. He actually created uh, each one of our custodial closets. Uh, he completely revamped uh, at least two of those. So we've done work with him before and the work has always been very exceptional at a very competitive price. Did that answer your question? Any further comments, questions or discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the proposal from McClay Construction say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 4-0 in favor. Item G, consideration of approval of the quote from Ventura County Office of Education for DOIP phone system replacement. Do I have a motion? I still move. Second. 
uh, comments or discussion? Dr. Ramirez, you yes. want to talk um, to this? So, so this, this, this project is one that uh, has been on our radar for quite some time. Uh, right now, our phone system is really uh, in need of upgrade. Uh, by moving uh, to this system, it's going to allow us to increase the functionality of each one of our phones. Uh, there are 60 units cited. Uh, that includes office phones, that includes uh, every classroom, office space, and so on. It's already been mapped out. There's going to be further work to be able to make sure that the map is consistent and that it meets the, the present need. Uh, but I think there's two elements to this. One is just communication, being able to um, allow teachers and staff to be able to make calls appropriately and receive incoming in a functional way, which sometimes right now is it can be challenging for us. In addition to that, it's also a safety mechanism. It allows us to be able to uh, use the intercom system, make messages uh, more available uh, within a space and across the campus. And uh, that is also something very much in mind. We are partnering with VCOE on this. They actually did our system upgrade of our um, wireless access points and and some additional cabling and infrastructure there so that this could be more um could be possible in the first place so it was a two-step process that process got uh taken care of now uh it's time to uh re redo our phone system one last point uh we are still considering whether this is a pro uh, a project that can happen during spring break that was our original plan that may not happen, uh, only having to do with some staffing issues on BCOE's end. Uh, they have at least one individual that may run point that may not be immediately available. Uh, so if it doesn't come together during spring, it'll come together the first uh, first thing as we let out for the summer. Okay. Um so I'm looking at this. I wanted to make a couple of comments. Number one, the equipment that's currently being used um, has been outdated for at least five years. I mean, the, the company was bought out and sold um, by Avaya. Um, they no longer man, no longer manufacture, manufacture nor service the equipment that we currently have. Um, it's a wise move. I did have a question here, a real simple one, how to do with the service level agreement. Is that just an ongoing 50, um, what that, it says, is that just a uh, $500 per unit or, you know, I'm trying to understand that service level agreement addendum, 2021 through 2022 school year. So increase the annual service agreement to 56,500 per year effective 24-25. And is that number going to be changing? That's something that we're going to be, is it a one-time or is it going to be an annual cost? I believe it's yeah. Right. So it's just, is it going to be $500? Okay. Okay. Yes, that's, a, that's an ongoing amount. That was what it was. That's what it's projected to be. Uh, the challenge that I that I'm anticipating is we may see some unpredictable uh, changes come up. Uh, interestingly enough, there was almost no downtime, literally no downtime, when the wireless access access points were turned over. So if that project or this project bears any resemblance to that project, we should be up and running. But it's always a little bit of a I always have a worry whenever there is uh, work happening of this sort during the school year because there's less wiggle room to be able to continue that. Um, and again, with the staffing, um, unpredictable kind of uh, scenario uh, took place here, uh, which I was informed about approximately a month ago, uh, we may wind up um, pushing that back just to make sure that everything goes well. We can make our way through the school year. That's not a concern. Uh, the 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 units that Mr. Sullivan is is identifying, we've had to go third party to try to locate those and swap them out. And we've been 
okay at doing that. But it's just, uh, it's at this at this point, it's a temporary solution. And this is the, the overhaul that's needed. So um, I will certainly inform the board um, which direction we head, <clears throat> but more likely than not, I, I think it's gonna have to de delay until the summer. Um, along those lines, is there any sort of training that comes with these because you're going to have new instruments and they're going to be different. They're not going to look the same that they've been for the last 20 years. Uh, there's going to be a people factor involved. And if doing it during uh, spring break would be, I don't, you know, you can get it done and put it installed, but the human factor is people coming back and say, how does it work? Yeah. that <clears throat> That's another piece to this. Um, and that's another reason why maybe pausing might be might be best. Uh, with that said, these these phone systems are relatively intuitive, at least just the the um, the actual unit itself. The functionality beyond that, that may be a different story. So um, I'll have to get back to you on that. But I, I think that the the units themselves will be fairly intuitive for for staff to be able to to utilize. Sure. That's good to know. Yeah, and, and we've been working on this now for really the better part of two years. Um, we knew that VCOE could afford us the best rate with a high level of, of uh, competency, particularly because we're a school and that does make us a little different than the private sector or, or another business. So with that said, we um, we very patiently waited our place in line. Uh, Mupu went first, I believe, and then Briggs. And so that allowed us to be next in line. So we're very close. And obviously as this agreement suggests, uh, so I, I, I think it's all, uh, on the whole, a very positive thing for us. Um, and like I said, the, to echo what Ms. Uh, Ms. Peterson indicated, it's been pretty seamless. And that's what I heard also from my counterparts in those districts. Uh, they've actually been very pleased with the transition and it's been very, um, almost a non-issue when it comes to their staff. Their staff has just more benefited from clear lines of communication as opposed to workarounds and challenges sometimes with having a phone system that's operational and depending on the space. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the quote from VCOE for the VOIP phone system replacement project say aye. Um, aye. Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 4-0 in favor. Item H, uh, consideration of approval of the 2024-2025 academic calendar. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. In a second. Discussion. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to just point out a couple of things. Uh, the calendar in terms of the start and end times is very similar. Uh, the breaks uh, are very similar on the whole to what we experienced this year. Uh, to take one step back, uh, we, for a number of years now, have always paid close attention to the Oxnard Union High School District calendar. We're not alone in that. Uh, many of the, of the uh, partner districts, whether it's Rio or Pleasant Valley, have a tendency to want to align, even though it's nothing formalized. It just makes sense. Um, and some of these, um, you know, are pretty intuitive. Where we do break and where there is a departure is around the spring break. And um, I went back and forth on this matter. Uh, we did put out a survey. The, the board received those survey results from both staff and families. Um, I'd like to offer up two things. One, I'd like to be able to, as we talk about next year's or next iteration's calendar, to bring this item back in the fall, because I think it 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 it's really a benefit to us to have a conversation well in advance of a calendar for the subsequent year. The other thing that I'll say about this particular calendar and having lived it now several years 
moving forward, the spring becomes a very challenging time for many of our families. Uh, there is a segment, it's not a majority, but it's a sizable segment of our families that have children or that they themselves are impacted by being in both calendars. And the misalignment that we currently experience is one that I have increasingly heard. Uh, it's one I've increasingly felt, but we're going to put me aside. I think more so it's an acknowledgement that wherever possible and wherever it makes sense that we should align. And it's not for the sake of alignment. It's about the challenges and hardships that families then go through. Um, some better equipped at handling that than others uh, around uh, extended breaks. Uh, so I'd like to have a further discussion on that in the future, but I want to make just two more points on this and then open it up for any questions. One is that uh, that misalignment has also consequences when it comes to our attendance, our attendance rates, because in it, inadvertently, we may be putting parents and families in a position of having to make some challenging choices. Uh, there's part of that that we see. And there's, of course, the part that we don't during that two-week break. Uh, and along that same lines, it's an extended period of time at a time where it's very late in the year and regrouping and coming back from that can be a little bit more challenging than one gives credit. A two-week break and then next year heading, uh, I believe it's uh, five or six weeks before we start CASP um, is something to definitely consider. And so there are a number of factors that I think we definitely need to revisit. I've been hesitant to move away from practices that the community finds very um, appealing, but I think we may have to revisit this beyond this year in a more, in a different and more comprehensive way. Well, the, um, my biggest concern is, is uh, as Peterson was going through the, uh, the audit or the acts uh, the interim report, excuse me, the interim report and the budgeting process and having been through this entire process with children and having them between multiple school districts and trying to get them all aligned um, has been my experience that the younger the student is, uh, the more prone that they be taken from school in order to accommodate the older students. Uh, that's what I found. Um, and so as she was doing her budget projections is my, my thoughts are how do we increase our P2 attendance? And this falls within that realm. And how do we keep things so that families, and it's not just families of our students, but we also, and I, there's board members here, they're gonna be falling into that. We also have staff members uh, that fall into that category and how that's going to impact their lives. Uh, and so I would like to see research done about how uh, it impacts. You know, I appreciate the survey, but also what's the actual numbers as far as attendance and how that's been impacted over the past several years and what can we project going forward um, where we're aligned and where we're not aligned, be it at Thanksgiving time, during the Christmas break, or during a spring break. Uh, yeah, if I could just respond, uh, that is something that uh, I wasn't able to compile entirely for this meeting, uh, but we are looking at the last three years of February data, for example, where that break occurs and where other holidays are already built in. It's the President's Day holiday and when it's observed. Um, and again, where other districts have already moved forward with a different, a different calendar model. Um, we aren't necessarily as impacted ourselves in April and into May, but certainly the Oxnard Union would be, even though it's a smaller population of students. So I do want to take a good comprehensive look at it. Um, I, I also am very much uh, respectful of the majority, but in this instance, there's a sizable minority that I think uh, is, is being uh, put out in a way that we could, we could change. So uh, I will be compiling more information. I will be looking at attendance as one, one data set that's objective, independent of opinion. Uh, it's just facts, and it's just what it is over the past three years. And, um, and so uh, with attendance being a, a focal point, I think it bears uh, a good, close examination. 
You mentioned uh, cast testing. When would that take place this year and in 2025? So we'd be looking at, we, te we tend to push out as far as we can. By statute, we can go all the way out into June, but we obviously don't want to go that far. So we tend to focus our energy over the last two weeks um, of May. And um, and that allows us a little bit of time before the end of the school year to capture any students that may have missed the section. And it also allows us to space out the sections a little more, more a little bit more fairly. So we've found that about a two week testing period is appropriate for us in order to get ourselves squared away. Um, but it really does go into uh, the last two weeks of May and into the first week of June. No, we're, we're, we're on our own on that one. Uh, the idea was to break up that month of March, uh, especially next year. It's going to be what we consider a late break, which means that uh, this year, for example, we go on break on the 22nd. Uh, but next year, it's going to be pretty much two full weeks later, right? So this is also the thing that happens. Uh, and it, it happens pretty much on off years, right? Uh, odds and evens almost. So we have a later break. And, and not only is it a later break, it's an extended later break. So that is from a learning perspective, a concern that I've shared um, and that I will continue to discuss with staff uh, because at the core of it, what we want to do is have a calendar that makes sense for learning or learning patterns. We don't want to shortchange ourselves, but we also don't want to leave blocks of time or increments of time that don't make sense either. But to come back to your question, uh, Mrs. Dryden, the that one is is pretty much a way of spacing out the times a bit, um, and there was no simple way or best way of putting it in February uh, in a way that made any sense. It would have really blocked off those weeks and made them three three day weeks or four day weeks in ways that just did not make sense for us. So uh, the staff did have input on this, certificated staff in particular. Uh, and I think this this landed in a in a bit of a better place given this the given the setup. Yeah. So so yes, we have a staff we have staff development. Careful now because you know some of us will be here. But uh, but that was something that was also very well received. Uh, it was a suggestion that was offered up by the board. It makes all the sense in the world. We're able to do it. It doesn't disrupt our calendar. And I think uh, it's, it's a good thing for us to preserve time and make it make sense with um, not just celebrations and things that happen uh, as a function of just um, life. Just to clarify, June 13 is the last day of school. Uh, or uh, let me let me bring it up in front of me. And the first day of school has a green box, but the last day just says early dismissal and then June 16, a holiday break. So I just want to make sure that- Yes, the 13th, the, the 13th- day is the 13th. Yes, the 13th is a day. And bear in mind that this calendar also touches upon um, a 12 month calendar, which uh, many of our staff is also under, right? We do have 12 month staff. So that is uh, uh, an observance of Juneteenth, which is a federal holiday. Thank you, appreciate that. We will correct that. And one other thing to note, uh, we are finalizing parent conferences. So we got input from from teachers on that uh, last this year was a little bit of a break from prior and on um, and also on um, uh, back um, back to school night. So we wanted to just make sure that that is something that the board is aware of that we will circle back and finalize. But just given the time of the year, we wanted to put this out and and have it approved, uh, even if we make that small revision. Uh, at the next board meeting. We just uh, were not able to make that adjustment 
for tonight's uh, meeting. Any further discussion comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the uh, or approving the 2024-2025 academic calendar, say aye. Amended. Aye. As amended, with aye. say aye. All those opposed, say nay. There's no nays. Okay, we'll count that 4-0 in favor, as amended. <laughs> Item I, under human resources, consideration of the adoption of resolution 23-24-10, the temporary certificated employee notice of release. Do I have a motion? I so move. I'll second the motion. Would you? I think Jamie beat out uh, Dr. Canby by a split second. Um, and then Trustee Ramirez, uh, Romano, she, uh, Romero, she seconded that. Anyway, discussion. Uh, if I could, Mr. Sullivan, I just yeah. wanted to make a comment. Uh, obviously, with, with this uh, action, uh, the board would be uh, releasing temporary uh, assignments as well as re-releasing uh, um, permanent employees from a, an assignment other than uh, what would be considered a traditional 100% um, uh, position. Um, I just want to represent what I've shared with the board already, and that is that I've made it my goal to talk to each one of these employees. These are employees that have been very dedicated to Mesa. Um, if there is an opportunity to have them continue with us, that is certainly something we we will uh, look to prioritize. Um, and um, I will continue to monitor our budget situation, our staffing needs uh, for every opportunity to bring back those that are a interested which uh, i believe they are uh and wherever there is a there is a an availability um present so um, i know it's always challenging to uh, move forward with uh, decisions such as this but it is something that um, we've worked very diligently to message and appropriately uh, communicate to our staff and particularly the staff that are being impacted Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting resolution 23-24-10 uh, regarding the temporary certificate and certificate employee notice of release, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. That motion carries 4-0 in favor. Uh, 13A. Uh, consideration of approval of the hiring of Jolano Ramirez as the school administrative assistant. Do I have a motion? Um, Dr. Camby, in second? I'll second the motion. Uh, Ms. Romero, second. Um, questions or comments? I'm just very thankful and grateful for Jolana. She's been uh, here at Mesa for a very long time, and it was very nice to be able to to staff this from within. Yes, uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Jalan has been a very, uh, she's been a parent here. She's been uh, just wonderful for, for, for many years. Uh, we certainly hope that continues and expect that to continue. Um, and uh, just very excited to have her in this role, uh, continuing her work here at Mesa. She's a student here. Her mother had worked here a long time. That much. All right. All those in favor of approving the hiring of Jolana Ramirez as the school administrative assistant say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries 4 0 in favor. And uh, items for future consideration is the LCAP update. And our next meeting will be Tuesday, April 16th at 6 p.m. With that, our meeting will adjourn at 8.11 p.m.